Hi all. Uh, in this, uh, we would be talking about uh, how to find out the technical names and how to find out the default parameter IDs. Now, parameter IDs are very important when we are talking about SAP. Uh, reason being, it would uh, help us out to default the master data at certain levels uh, for certain transactions. Now, we will see how to default the parameter IDs also as a part of this video. Uh, first, let's try to understand what is a technical name and then what is a field name. Now, let's pick up any of the table. Okay, we'll go with EKKO. Now, this is actually a purchasing document header. Now, this is for uh, purchase documents. So, prior to that, let us first go to... Now, first, I mean, uh, let us try to understand this table itself. Now, I have pulled up a table, EKKO. Now, here you can see... On the extreme left, you can see these are the field labels like purchasing document, company code, doc category, document type, control, deletion indicator, status, created on, created by. On the extreme right side, exactly in front of purchasing doc, you can see EBELN. Now, this is the technical name of the purchasing doc in SAP. Now, why this is important? Well, uh, this one is very important uh, because what happens when if you have to do any kind of development, you need to pass on this information to the developer. Now, basically, the programming language of SAP is called as a BAP, and the developers are called ABAPers. So, if you have to deal with ABAPers with respect to any kind of development respect to the purchasing document, they need to use this as a technical name, EBELN in the programming. So, this needs to be passed on to them. So, this is very important when you have any kind of development, you need to first find out the technical names. So, how would you do that? Now, for that, let's go into say transaction ME21N only. I would pick up because the same table I have picked up, so it will be easy. Now, you can see there are two sections to this one is a header, and the second one is item overview, right? Now, we were looking at the header table so i'm going to click on header and here in the header you can see there are different fields like delivery invoice payment terms payment conditions then text then address communication partners additional data org data status payment processing so all this now, if I have to find out the technical name of any of the field, how would I do? Now let's go with the purchasing org. So if I have to find out the technical name of this, I will do function F1. Now you can see there are a lot many tabs here. There are a lot many icons here. So adjacent to the book, there is a technical information icon. Now this one is something like with a hammer. So if you click on this, you can see there is one more pop-up. Now here you will find all the technical details like your program name. This is very important. Like your field name, which is again very important. Now this is a technical field name basically, EKORG. In the field data, the table name, the field name, the parameter ID. These are the three important things that you would get. So here you can see the parameter ID is EKO. We will see how to use this and how to default the parameter ID. Then the field name EKORG. Then the program name. So this is how you will find the technical information pertaining to any of the fields. Now if you have to find out about the company code, function F1 again. And then on the technical icon, you can see here, this is your field name, BUKRS. Right? Now, I'm going to go to SE16N again and we are going to see the technical names. Now, here for the company code, you can say it is BUKRS. This is what we saw over there, right? Yeah, this is the company code function F1. Then our technical information, 
and then you can see VUKRS, right? So this is how you will find out the technical information. Now let's concentrate on parameter ID. Now this is your parameter ID BUK. Okay, now what we are going to do is let's pick up a transaction code. Um, how to create a vendor? XK01 is a transaction code. Now you can see in this field creation of vendor, you can see vendor, company code, purchasing org, account group, there are four fields. Now if I have to default the company code, the purchasing organization, the account group, how can I do? So for that, as what I was telling you, that we need to default the parameter IDs. Now to default the parameter IDs, what do I mean? Now defaulting of the parameter IDs means in the technical information, the parameter ID what we saw, we need to maintain a value against it. And if you do that in a user ID, automatically next time it will pick up that value. Now company code, let's see. Purchasing organization, what is the parameter ID? I can make out that the purchasing org, it is BUK, the parameter ID. The purchasing organization is your EKORG and parameter ID is EKO. Basically, it will be the first three letters majorly. The account group, you can see here the field name is KTOKK and the parameter ID is KGK. Okay, now I'm going inside. SU3. I'm going into own data. And here in the parameters, now here we have to give the same parameter IDs what we have given. Now over there it was EKO for the purchasing org. So I'm going to give my EKO as Z008, then BUK, my company code is 2350, and then KGK, the accounting group, again I'm going to give it as Z008, that is my vendor account group. So I'm just going to enter. Now you can see here vendor account group, purchasing org, and company code. So we have given certain values in the parameter section of my own user profile, and I'm going to save this. So let's see what will be the impact of this. So I have saved. Now I'm going to go into XK01 again. You can see here the company code, the purchasing organization and the account group. It is picked up automatically. If I'm going into go to XD01, this is your customer account creation. You can see here company code it has picked up automatically 2350. So this is how you can default your values, certain values. Now default a value, the most important thing is the parameter ID. So if you're maintaining any value against your parameter ID in your user profile, that value would be defaulted for the entire transactions of SAP, whatever you're going to use. Now this will not be used for certain transactional transaction IDs. However, for master transactional IDs, it would be used. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please do subscribe to our channel if in case you like this video and please do give a like as well. And uh, in the upcoming videos, we'll be talking a little more about the SAP basic. Thank you.